Okay, we've got uh, we've got all the work done over there on the router table, and uh, we moved over here to the table saw now. We're going to use a tenon jig. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, I might. Uh, well, I'm about to get ahead of myself again there. Maybe, maybe, maybe we've got some viewers there that's never used a tenon jig, so I might uh, might want to explain what it is and how it works. And, and all that sort of thing. So let me let me spin the camera down here and, and uh, kind of go over this just a little bit. Uh, get in to zoom in here just a small amount. Difficult for me to see what what the camera's seeing there. What this is is it's a big old cast iron apparatus if you've never saw one it's called a tenon and jig and what it allows you to do is stand board on the end uh, like 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 this is the one that we cut right here and this is the one we're going to be we're working on it allows you to stand it on end and clamp it in place and run it across the blade and make a and make a true and accurate cut with it with your wood in a vertical position and it'll do angles if you uh, if you actually wanted to cut a tenon on a 45, uh, it'll lay back and it'll lay over and cut different angles for different functions. But as a general rule, most most of the time people use them in a 90 degree position. Of course, they fit in the miter slot. Uh, several different companies make these things. Uh, Delta makes them, and I think I saw some jets and uh, and some cheaper ones uh, from some import companies. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. They all work basically the same. Some of them's a little nicer, a little fancier than others. This is a Grizzly. Uh, I, I was just, uh, I was by there one day uh, at the Grizzly Warehouse and uh, I got several pieces It's Grizzly and I looked at it over and it was good and heavy duty and solid and I liked it and it had a really good price on it so uh, I went ahead and got it. Uh, and it works well. In fact, if you're looking for a tenon and jig, uh, look at the Grizzly. It's uh, not an advertisement for Grizzly, but that's what I use and I like it. So uh, that's the way that works. But anyhow, so we're back to our we're back to our pieces here. Now we got the profile cut, and we're going to have this tenon sticking out here. So what we want left is a quarter of an inch. And I've already got the jig set up, so I can come in here and I can put my stock in the jig. And, and then clamp it down. Now it's a standing vertical. It's it's a perfect 90 degrees this way and a perfect 90 this way. And on these tenon and jigs, you got adjustments. You can loosen here and, and you can turn your adjustment and move it in and out and place that cut exactly where you want it on your stock with it standing vertical. So, so we're going to make a pass here on each end of this thing and then we're going to measure it uh, and see. Uh, See where we're at. Okay, let me let me turn the camera around here. See if I can see if I can get it up here to what we cut. Can you see that? Light might be a shining on it. I've got the caliper on it. I don't know where you can see it in the camera or not, but that is dead on one quarter inch. So that's what we're after. And now we've got this profile. So we've got to, we, we've got the uh, the coping stick profile, and we've got the inch and a quarter tenon that's going to give us our extra strength, and then this little bit of waste. 
So we're going to cut all of these pieces the same. We're going to make all these cuts, make all these tenon cuts. And then we're going to take tenon and jig off the saw and set the blade, lower it down. We're just barely just come up here and we're going to cut away the waste. So that'll give us, that'll give us a coping stick joint with an extended length tenon. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut these. I'm going to get the camera off because you've seen this. and I'm just going to cut the rest of them the same way I did this one. And I'm going to cut the waist off. So I'll just go ahead and get a quick shot of how I uh, cut the waist away on these tenons. Just uh, to give somebody some kind of idea. So anyway, here's our piece. and We've got it, uh, we've got it cut. Now we want to take this waist off. I already got the, set, the height set on the saw blade and the uh, miter gauge set up here. We're gonna anchor gauge and, and uh, I already got it set up to, to cut the right way, so just, just a matter of running across the saw. So that's how we get down to the proper length tenon. Now we've got a coping stick joint with an inch and a quarter tenon, and it's ready to be used. Okay, I got this other fluid router bit set up in the shaper, and I got the shaper set on high speed. It's a pretty good size cutter. The fluid is a, is a, is a super super router bit anyway. They cost a little bit more, but they are a premium bit. But anyway, at 10,000 RPM, that's what my shaper runs on high speed. Uh, and that's about probably the lowest setting on a, uh, on a big router, 10, 12,000, something like that. But at any rate, I get a super, super cut with my fluid cutter and running it on my shaper in high speed. So, you know, I could use the hold down features that come with the shaper and stuff and uh, we'll run the styles through here. So I'll go ahead and run one through and we'll get these cut and uh, we'll move on over to the mortise machine and, and cut some mortise. profile style if I can focus up here but we've got that now we're ready to take it over here and uh, and make the mortise on down in it with the mortise machine for the uh, tenon okay uh, progressing along here we've got down here now we've got the styles over here and we've got the profile laid on them and now we're going to cut the mortises in them for those extended tenons. Uh, got over here at the mortise machine. Uh, not going to go through all that with the with the viewers. I'm, I'm going to cut one mortise right here, and for uh, for some of the some of the viewers maybe that never seen a mortise machine in action, and, and uh, see how it works. And pretty simple process. We're just making a <laughs> making a, a square hole, a series of square holes to make a mortise. 
But anyway, I'll uh, I'll turn the camera around here and let's see that uh, a little bit and see how that works. And uh, uh, I'll just go ahead and cut the rest of them off camera and get those cut and sized, and uh, we'll be getting close to some assembly time. just a little bit at the time. That way it don't stress anything, especially with the little quarter inch cutter. You can't, can't move a whole lot of uh, excess material with that thing at the time. So I just take cut a little at a time with it and back it out and I clean it out. so I know what size to cut them. So there we've got that one. Marked up. Dust out of it. dust gets packed in there and it's hard to get out. Let's get some scripts of out there. So now, let me see if I can get it up here. We uh, uh, can't see it very well. We've got a tenon, I mean a mortise for the tenon to go in right here. Of course you can see here where I had it marked. And this is going to be something I didn't talk about yesterday when I, uh, when I posted the other, the other part of the video when we was talking about these tenons. And I didn't even show cutting them uh, after I got them done. But these are going to be a blind. Tenon. So in other words, they're going to have a step right here. So when you look at the end of it, the end of the frame, of course nobody will ever see that, but when you look at the end of the frame, it'll look like a normal coping stick profile and frame. You won't you won't see that big long mortise. So we've left this much. So we'll cut it back and step it down. So the mortise and tenon joint will actually be in here. But when you look at the end of the frame, It'll look like it's a regular, uh, regular 3H tenon on it. So I'll go ahead and mortise the rest of these pieces and get them sized and get them ready. And uh, when I get those done, uh, and get the rest of those pieces mortises, mortised, uh, we'll be ready to do some assembly. And we'll do some assembly on these frames, and then we'll we'll start putting the frames to the back. Okay, uh, I almost forgot this step right here. Um, and I know there's probably going to be some questions asked on it if I don't detail it in here. Uh, I've talked to some people, uh, talked to some people personally that's, uh, that's watched the first two parts of the video and uh, they're real pleased with the detail. Sometimes I get, I get carried away and I think that might be a little too much detail, but there's a lot of folks, I guess, that's... Uh, that watches these videos that, that hadn't seen stuff like this done, 
uh, or uh, you don't need a refresher on it or, or whatever. Uh, all, all different kinds of people view. So anyway, I'm going to put this in here. And uh, it, for those that's wondering how I cut the haunch tenons on these pieces, you know, we cut we, we cut the tenon. And then I'm, I fell back with it. Uh, let me see it here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, from the outside edge, we're going to fall back a half inch and we're going to cut it off. And then it'll be it'll it'll be just like a regular coping stick for that half inch. So when you put it in the style, you don't see this. You don't see the long tenon or the hole or anything. It, it hides every everything it says it's a extended tenon joint like this. So anyhow, cut it on the bandsaw. And uh, uh, it's not complex or anything. I've got a little stop set up here. Actually, I'm going to make two cuts. We'll cut down it and we'll cut across, cut it off. I use both bandsaws for that. I've got to, I've got them both set up here, so I'll, I'll uh, make this cut on both ends, on one of them. Then I'll go over to the other saw and then I'll cut them off. So I'll turn this around here and let's see how that works. Now we'll take it over to the other bandsaw. Let's see if we can see this now. Now we'll take it over to the other bandsaw and we'll cut it off and we'll cut the waste away. I'll, uh, okay, cut here we are at the other, other bandsaw. And, uh, I'll just cut these, I'll put it up against the fence and, and then just hold it straight on the fence. We're, going to, we're just going to cut over here to this thing and cut it off. So. <laughs> okay here's here's what it's all about so now we've got a rail and our styles done and we've got our extended tenons cut on these things and we've got our our, our uh, recess cut in it right here I, I think actually this is called a haunch tenon got this shoulder on it here but what this will do now if I've laid it out and cut it properly the tenon will go in the mortise, and then the cope and stick part goes together like this, and there we are. So we got a we got a cope and stick joint. When you look at it, we got the profile. But when we glue this thing up, get it all square, we got the mortise and tenon in here that makes this joint extremely strong. So that's what that's what we was after. We've got a pretty good fit right here. Uh, time we get it put together and glued up. Now what I'll do now is this back, this back piece, your panel normally sets in here. But we're going to have this glass and we're going to have it removable. So we don't need this. This will be waste. So I'm going to set up and I'm going to cut this off of all these rails. Cut the just cut it off. This will be done the same way, but I won't cut it off until I put these together and put it in there. And then I'll take a router and I'll cut off. So that way, when I come out, when I come out here to the rail, it stops. I won't go beyond that. You cut it off now. If you cut this waste off now, and you come on out here, then when you put this joint together, there's a big, a big old gap right here. That, that would be gone. So, still going to have to put it together and cut this off afterward. But it won't be near as big a problem. We cut this off first, 
and then, and then do the assembly on the frame. Then we can cut this off and come up here to it and stop. Very, very little to, uh, to straighten out there for a square edge. So there's how that is. That's uh, pretty simple. We got the mortises cut, the tenons cut on all the pieces. I'm going to go ahead and check the rest of these and make sure that they all fit good and the joints is good and everything's square. Let me get the camera back up here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and test fit all the joints and dry dry fit everything and, and, and assemble it and and look it over, make sure everything fits like it should. And I've got it squared, and I didn't uh, didn't miscalculate on any piece. I think it's all going to work out well. But what we're going to do now, when I see that all this is going to fit on the front side of the frame, which will be the front of the cabinet, we're going to have to make a corner post. Okay, moving along in the next step in this project right here. The, uh, the frame, we got that made up, and I got it test fitted, and everything fit good. And... Now what we're going to do is we're going to run two pieces of that frame to make the front corners. We're going to run one on each side and then we're going to run another piece for that to, to make the corner. Using a miter lock bit here, what they call it, it, it cuts a 45 and uh, then it puts a groove in one, a tongue in the other, and they go together kind of like a tongue and a groove, but it, it goes together and makes a, a 90. Of course, it cuts each piece 45. So what you do is you run one piece standing up, run one piece laying down. You can get these in router bits. Uh, I've seen different companies offer them in router bits. In fact, I've got some 22 and a half router bits. That takes two different cutters to make the 22 and a half. But the 45, it just takes one cutter, one, one piece of stock lays flat and then one piece stands up and you run it. That's how you get it. I'm using a shaper cutter. Uh, of course, most of you know that watch this YouTube channel. Uh, I, I lean toward the shaper a whole lot. He used router bits in it and everything, so but uh, that's a personal choice. But anyway, mine's a shaper cutter. And I've already run the vertical pieces. I think went through the trouble and <laughs> these things are these things are a barrier to set up when you first get get to messing with them uh, I'd advise anybody that was buying one if, if, the, if the company that you're buying one from sells a setup block get it the four or five dollars or whatever they cost it's well worth it uh, especially if you've never used one after you know if you if you use one and you're used to it and you know how they work it uh, it's not that necessary but just to start out uh, but I started out with this one and it took me forever to be able to get the thing set correctly to make that uh, to make that joint uh, if you want to make a real nice 90 it's got to be dead on you've got to be dead on accurate with your fence setting and your height so after you get it, then you can run you a couple of pieces and and make a setup block. But that initial setup, if you've never done it, is a it's a barrier. So anyhow, I've talked enough. I'm gonna turn around here. What I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna run the piece horizontal. I've done run the vertical uh, and the tinkering with the setup and adjusting it and uh, uh, run several scrap pieces to get it just like I wanted. It. Then I just grabbed up the two vertical ones and shoved them through there before I realized I didn't even have a camera out. So. Going to run one of the horizontal pieces, virtually the same thing. It just would stand up instead of lay down. And I got the hold down switch now for it to lay down. So we'll run this one through and let you see how that works. And then I'll show you what it looks like uh, when you put it together.
hard to hard to see the profile. But this is what a this is what a minor joint uh, minor lock bit joint looks like. Now, this is this is one half of it. Now when you run the other when you run the other piece the other half and you run it vertical, it stands up like this and then they lock together. We'll take the camera over here and I'll show you one that I've got uh, that I ran a while ago. And I've got it uh, clamped up. Not glued yet, but just a dry fit. Let me move the camera over and let you see. Okay, here's our corner post. This is, uh, this is two pieces that I run through the miter lock. Uh, and you can see right there, uh, when you get it set up correctly, it's just, it's just right at perfect. We take, rub some sandpaper across this after we glue it together and uh, it'll, uh, it'll be a good joint. It, and it fits good and tight in here. So this will be the corner post for the front of the cap, or the front of the display cabinet. So this is, this is what we've been working after. And like I said, this, uh, this whole clamp up here is just a test fit. I'll do the same thing with the other one. They look good. And uh, what I'm gonna do probably is, uh, is glue, the, glue the, uh, the frames together before we cut the coping stick things and glue those together and let them dry and get them good and square and, and, and together. And then I'll add these corner pieces on the front of each one and uh, that'll give it a whole lot more, a whole lot more strength. And then we'll attach it to the back. Uh, and then we'll, we'll be, be on our way to having a, a case put together that we can set up and put the final pieces in and get the door tracks laid out then put in there and get the glass on order and get the project finished. Now that's all for today. I think I'll retire for the day. So get started on it again. Uh, be back in the shop doing some more video. Have a good day.